The Japanese occupation of the Andaman Islands occurred in 1942 during World War II. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands 8,293 square kilometers on 139 islands, are a group of islands situated in the Bay of Bengal at about 1,250 kilometers 780 miles from Kolkata, 1,200 kilometers 750 miles from Chennai and 190 kilometers 120 miles from Cape Nargis in Burma. Until 1938 the British government used them as a penal colony for Indian and African political prisoners, who were mainly put in the notorious cellular jail in Port Blair, the biggest town port on the islands. Today they form a Union Territory of India. The only military objective on the islands was the city of Port Blair. The garrison consisted of a 300-man Sikh militia with 23 British officers, augmented in January 1942 by a Gurkha detachment of 4 12th Frontier Force Regiment of the 16th Indian Infantry Brigade. Following the fall of Rangoon on March 8, however, the British recognised that Port Blair had become impossible to defend, and on March 10 the Gurkhas were withdrawn to the Arakan Peninsula. Invasion force The Japanese, seeking to secure their seaward flank, dispatched a force to seize the islands. The force was composed of the following units and ships, distant cover Cruiser flagship Chokai Carrier Division 4 Carrier Ryujo although listed, she did not conduct air operations Cruiser Division 7 Heavy Cruisers Kumano Suzuya Mikuma Mogami Destroyer Division 11 Fubuki Hatsuyuki Shiryuki Murakami Close Cover Destroyer Squadron 3 Light Cruiser Sender Destroyer Division 19 Isonami Uranami Ianami Destroyer Division 20 Amagiri Asajiri Yugiri Shirakumo Invasion Force Light Cruiser Yura, Escort Unit Nine Transports 1 Battalion from 18th Infantry Division 9th Base Force Training Cruiser Kashi Escort Ship Shumushu Minalaya Hatsutaka Converted Gunboat Aiko Mara Minesweeper Division 1 Minesweepers W1, W3, W4 Special Minesweeper Division 91 Minesweepers, Choko Maru, Shonen Maru No. 7, Shonen Maru No. 5 Air Unit Seaplane Tender Sagara Maru operated east of the Nicobars <laughs> <laughs> Japanese occupation Port Blair was occupied on 23 March 1942. The garrison offered no resistance to the landings, and were disarmed and interned. Many of the Sikh militia later enlisted in the Indian National Army. The British militia officers were sent to Singapore as POWs, whilst Chief Commissioner Waterfall, Deputy Commissioner Major A.G. Byrd, and the other British administrative officers were imprisoned. The Japanese released the prisoners held in the jail, one of whom, Pushkar Bakshi, became their principal collaborator. The islands were put under the authority of Colonel Bucko, whilst a number of junior Indian officials in the administration were elevated to more responsible posts. The defence of the islands was assigned to the newly formed fighter squadron of the Kanoya Kokutai based at Tavoy in southern Burma. This fighter squadron was the former Yamada unit. Under the control of the 22D Koku Sentai, then based at Penang. Six flying boats from the Toko Kokutai were dispatched on March 26, with 12 more arriving shortly thereafter. Within the islands, a Japanese garrison of approximately 600 men, together with the police force, now under Japanese control, were responsible for maintaining order. Japanese Army personnel in Andaman and Nicobar. Yoshisuke Inoue, Commanding Officer 35th Independent Mixed Brigade, Andaman Islands Toshio Itsuki, Commanding Officer 36th Independent Mixed Brigade, Nicobar Islands Hideo Iwakuro, Japanese Liaison Officer to Indian National Army Major General Saburo Isoda, Japanese Liaison Officer to Indian National Army 
Topic: <laughs> Japanese atrocities. The events of the next three years are not easy to establish, as the Japanese destroyed all records when they left. The principal sources are an unpublished report by local resident Rama Krishna, the Andaman Islands under Japanese occupation 1942–5, another unpublished account by a British officer, D. McCarthy, the Andaman interlude he was sent on a secret mission to the islands in 1944, together with the memories of the older inhabitants interviewed by historians. All these and the published works that draw upon them are in agreement that the occupation saw numerous atrocities committed by the Japanese against the local population. The first victim of the occupation came on the fourth day after the Japanese landings. Angered by soldiers who had pursued some chickens into his house, a young man called Zulfika Ali fired an airgun at them. No one was hurt, but he was forced into hiding. After 24 hours, he was captured and marched to the Maiden in front of the Browning Club. Here his arms were twisted until they broke, and he was then shot. A cement memorial now stands on the spot. In the early days of the occupation local intellectuals mostly officials and doctors were encouraged to join Rash Bihari Bose's Indian Independence League, and a «peace committee» was formed from its members, headed by Dr. Diwan Singh. Over the next few months they did what they could to mitigate the suffering of the population at the hands of the Japanese, but to little avail, indeed, many of them would later fall victim themselves. In any case, there was little any of them could have done to save Major A.G. Bird, who had not been sent to Rangoon or Singapore like the other British captives, and of whom the Japanese were determined to make an example. Pushkar Bakshi persuaded a fellow convict, Sarip Ram, to bear witness at Bird's trial that he had been spying wireless parts had been planted in the house where he was imprisoned. According to eyewitnesses, a popular man known as Chiri. Bird in Hindi had his arms and legs twisted and broken, and was then beheaded by Colonel Bucko with his sword. Korean and Malay women were brought in to act as comfort women for the Japanese garrison. Forced labor was used to build a new airport, and in October 1942 mass arrests of spies took place, with 300 people being confined in the cellular jail, where some were tortured. Of these seven were shot, including Narayan Rao, who had been superintendent of police under Japanese auspices, Ida Singh, the deputy superintendent, Subeda Subi Singh of the military police and Dr. Surinder Nag. Realizing that the Japanese were targeting influential members of the population, the members of the Indian Independence League grew increasingly nervous, and ceased to engage in much nationalist activity. In 1943 a second reign of terror was unleashed by the new commander of the garrison, Colonel Jochi Renuzakai, and Chief of Police Mitsubashi, both of whom had served at Nanking. 600 people were arrested and tortured, including Dr. Diwan Singh, who died as a result of his injuries. At this stage, the Japanese decided that Bakshi was no longer useful, and he was imprisoned. The Azi Hukumat e Azad Hind On December 29, 1943, political control of the islands was passed to the Azad Hind government of Subhas Chandra Bose. Bose visited Port Blair to raise the tricolour flag of the Indian National Army. During this, his only visit to the Andamans, he was kept carefully screened from the local population by the Japanese authorities. Various attempts were made to inform him of the sufferings of the people of the Andamans, and the fact that many local Indian nationalists were at that time being tortured in the cellular jail. Bose does not seem to have been aware of this, and the judgment of some is that he "...failed his people." After Bose's departure the Japanese remained in effective control of the Andamans, and the sovereignty of the Azi Hukumat e Hind was largely fictional. The islands themselves were renamed Shahid and Swaraj meaning Mata and self-rule, respectively. Bose appointed General A. D. Loganathan as the governor of the islands, and had limited involvement with the administration of the territory. During his interrogation after the war Loganathan admitted that he had only had full control over the island's vestigial education department, as the Japanese had retained control over the police force, and in protest he had refused to accept responsibility for any other areas of government. He was powerless to prevent the worst Japanese atrocity of the occupation, the Homfraganj massacre of 30 January 1944, where 44 Indian civilians were shot by the Japanese on suspicion of spying. Many of them were members of the Indian Independence League. 
Notionally this government continued to administer the islands, which were almost the only territory it ever acquired, until the British retook them in 1945, but in practice little had changed. The last year As food became scarcer in 1945, the Japanese resorted to ever more desperate measures. Between 250 and 700 people estimates vary from the Aberdeen area of South Andaman were deported to an uninhabited island to grow food. According to a survivor, a released convict called Sadagar Ali, at least half drowned or were eaten by sharks as they were pushed out of boats in the dark, whilst the remainder either died of starvation or were killed by Burmese pirates. A rescue mission sent to the island after the end of the occupation found just 12 survivors and over a hundred skeletons on the beach. In all, approximately 2,000 people in the Andamans are thought to have died as a result of the occupation, and at least 501 were tortured by the Japanese. The former figure represents 10% of the pre-war population of Port Blair. Casualties on the more sparsely populated Nicobar Islands were fewer, as the Japanese did not have a garrison there, although in 1943 they created a brief reign of terror on Ka Nicobar as they rounded up forced labor amongst the Nicobaris. The occupation left a legacy of lasting bitterness towards the Japanese, and to some extent towards their collaborators in the Azi Hukamat e Azad Hind. Amongst the generation which experienced it, Japanese Vice Admiral Hara Taizo, and Major General Tamanori Sato surrendered the islands to Brigadier J. A. Salomons, commander of 116th Indian Infantry Brigade, and Chief Administrator Mr. Noel K. Patterson, Indian Civil Service, on 7 October 1945, in a ceremony performed on the Gymkhana ground, Port Blair. See also Battle of the Malacca Strait Cocos Islands Mutiny India in World War II Notes